you have now entered the Oval Office of Talk Radio for the Gulf Coast with Carl Gallops and Freedom Friday. Carl doesn't need a teleprompter. He actually knows the difference between right and wrong and the difference between common sense and political correctness. He is on a first name basis with God. What a refreshing place to be. Now, here's Carl Gallops. Welcome to this special report from Freedom Friday. The following information that I'm going to report to you is taken heavily and and much of it word for word from an article released by Dr. Jerome Corsi today, July 29th, on WorldNet Daily. I reported to you a few weeks ago that on July the 5th, 2011, a subpoena was issued by the U.S. District Court for the District of Hawaii allowing California attorney Orly Tates to examine the original 1961 Obama birth certificate, and she was to examine that birth certificate on August the 8th at 10 a.m. in Hawaii. Now, Tates' subpoena was served upon Loretta Fuddy, the director of the Hawaii Department of Health. Hawaii Deputy Attorney General Jill Nagamin is representing Fuddy. Now, because Fuddy neglected to file opposition to the court-issued subpoena within the 14 days specified, the Hawaii Department of Health appears to have little recourse but to comply with the subpoena by producing the Obama original birth certificate supposedly on file at the Hawaii Department of Health. This will be released for Attorney Orly Tates' examination. Now, Tates is planning to travel to the state agency despite receiving no answer from Fuddy as to whether or not she intends to comply with the federal court-issued subpoena. Computer scanning expert Doug Vogt, who has already filed a 22-page criminal complaint with the FBI, and typesetting expert with 50 years of experience Paul Erie, says that they will accompany attorney Orly Tates when she presents to the Hawaii Department of Health, the subpoena that should allow her legally to examine Barack Obama's original 1961 typewritten birth certificate. Vote and Erie both told WorldNet Daily that they are making travel plans to join Tates in Honolulu when she goes to the state agency at 10 a.m. on Monday, August the 8th, to present the subpoena in person. Vote said, quote, we will plan to hold a press conference late in the day of August the 8th, and if the document we see varies from the birth certificate documents the White House released, we plan to file criminal charges in Hawaii immediately. Typesetting expert Paul Erie says that it won't take long to evaluate the original birth record if it exists. He says, quote, over the years of my career, I've seen everything that can be put on paper. Now that I'm thoroughly familiar with what the White House released, I will be able to tell you within a few minutes if what the Hawaii Department of Health has matches what the White House has released or not. He says, I will expect to see the same differences in typeface that are on the White House version. Otherwise, I will know immediately that what the Hawaii Department of Health is showing us is a forgery. They said we will scan the document to compare it to the White House electronic version and the Xerox copies that they handed out in the press room. We will immediately make our scan available to the public over the Internet so the American public can see for themselves. Erie told WorldNet Daily he expects the Hawaii Department of Health at the last minute will do everything possible to prevent Tates from getting access to the 1961 original Obama birth certificate if it exists. Quite frankly, Erie said, I doubt the Hawaii Department of Health has anything to show us. And if we do see a document, my guess is that it will have been forged for the purpose of showing us something. Vote and Erie repeatedly have told WorldNet Daily that if the Hawaii Department of Health had an original 1961 Obama birth certificate, of course the most credible thing to have done on April the 27th when Obama released this certificate would have been to release that document to the public for professional forensic examination by qualified independent professionals. So perhaps by August the 8th we will have an answer to the birth certificate debacle and the Obama eligibility question. Or not. (laughs) Does anyone want to predict what will actually happen on August the 8th?